Hello, my name's Janet Killen. Thank you for joining me for Thursday Evening Prayer. The Diocese of Newcastle ministers and worships on the unceded land of the Awabigal, the Baripi, the Darkanyung, the Garigal, the Gawigal, Kamilaroi, Waramai and Wanarua peoples. I pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging and stand in solidarity with the call of the statement from the heart for treaty, voice and truth. In our lectionary today we remember St Alban, Christian martyr, a little about St Alban written by Tara Hearn. Christianity found its way to the British Isles by merchants in the early 2nd century AD when the land was still under Roman occupation. Since its arrival, the religion has seen thousands of British believers persecuted, whether that be under the Roman Empire or subsequent rulers. The 16th century Reformation springs to mind. However, there was one man who began it all, St Alban, the first recorded Christian martyr in England. Roman Britain was brutal for early Christian believers, with many being executed and others scourged into submission. Bede's e e ecclesiastical history of the English people recorded how in the 3rd and 4th century AD Christians faced severe persecution, with many going into hiding. One such priest was Amphilibus who Alban offered to shelter from his tormentors. Alban at the time was still a pagan. Some accounts suggest he could have even served in the Roman army, though it is recorded that while being housed the priest, Alban himself was converted to Christianity. Therefore, when Roman soldiers came searching for Amphibolus, Auburn came up with the ploy to swap cloaks in, a, in an attempt to confuse the Romans. This resulted in Auburn's capture and audience before a judge. He was later ordered to suffer the punishment that would have befallen the priest, being scourged and tortured into renouncing his faith. Facing such trials, Auburn supposedly declared, I worship and adore the true and living God who created all things. The judge, seeing he could not be bent into submission, ordered his beheading. Despite Alban offering himself up instead of the priest, Amphilus was un unable to escape detection and is recorded to have been stoned to death only days later. Collect for St. Alban. Almighty God, who gave to your servant Alban boldness to confess the name of Jesus Christ and courage to die for this faith, teach us always to be ready to give a reason for the hope that is in us and to suffer gladly for the sake of our Lord and Saviour, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. If you're following in the prayer book, Thursday evening prayer begins on page 410. We will be reading a portion of Psalm 8, 118, verses 19 to 29, and then Psalm 120. This begins on page 348, and we will be reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 6 to 13. Let us pray. The Lord our God, the Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and exult and give God the glory. Glory to God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. The opening canticle, A Song of Joy. Be joyful in the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who has made us, and we are his. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. 
Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good, his loving kindness is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. The day is now past and the night is at hand. Let us pray with one heart and mind. Father of lights, receive the prayer and praise we offer you as our evening sacrifice. Make us a light for all the world, delivered by your goodness from all the works of darkness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. On page 348, Psalm 118, beginning at verse 19. Verse 19. Open me the gates of righteousness, and I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter it. I will praise you, for you answered me, and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the head of the corner. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvellous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. O Lord, save us, we pray. O Lord, send us prosperity. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord we bless you. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. Guide the festal throng up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will praise you. You are my God, I will exalt you. O give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. Psalm 120 on page 359. I call to the Lord in my trouble, that he may answer me. O Lord, deliver me from lying lips and from the treacherous tongue. What will he do to you, and what more will he do to you? O treacherous tongue, you are sharp as the arrows of a warrior, and are tempered in coals of juniper. Alas for me, I am like a stranger in Meshech, like one who dwells amidst the tents of Kedah. My soul has been too long among those who are enemies to peace. I am for peace, but when I speak of it, they make themselves ready for war. God our Saviour, you sent Jesus into the world of sin and delivered him up to death for us. Kindle in our hearts the same love with which he loved his own to the end, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 12, beginning at verse 6. But if I wish to boast, I will not be a fool, For I will be speaking the truth, but I refrain from it, so that no one may think better of me than what is seen in me or heard from me, even considering the exceptional character of the revelations. Therefore, to keep me from being too elated, a thorn was given to me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I appealed to the Lord about this, that it would leave me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. So I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions and calamities for the sake of Christ. For whenever I am weak, 
then I am strong. I have been a fool. You forced me to it. Indeed, you should have been the ones commending me, for I am not at all inferior to these super apostles, even though I am nothing. The signs of a true apostle were performed among you with utmost patience, signs and wonders and mighty works. How have you been worse off than the other churches, except that I myself did not burden you? Forgive me this wrong. Here I am, ready to come to you this third time, and I will not be a burden, because I do not want what is yours, but you. For children ought not to lay up for their parents, but parents for their children. I will most gladly spend and be spent for you. If I love you more, am I to be loved less? Let it be assumed that I did not burden you. Nevertheless, you say, since I was crafty, I took you in by deceit. Did I take advantage of you through any of those whom I sent to you? I urged Titus to go and sent the, bro the brother with him. Titus did not take advantage of you, did he? Did we not conduct ourselves with the same spirit? Did we not take the same steps? Have you been thinking all along that we have been defending ourselves before you? We are speaking in Christ before God. Everything we do, beloved, is for the sake of building you up. For I fear that when I come, I may find you not as I wish, and that you may find me not as you wish. I fear that there may perhaps be quarrelling, jealousy, anger, selfishness, slander, gossip, conceit and disorder. If I fear that when I come again, sorry, I fear that when I come again, my God may humble me before you, and that I may have to mourn over many who previously sinned and have not repented of the impurity, sexual immorality and licentiousness that they have practised. May your word live in us and bear much fruit to your glory. The Canticle, the Song of Christ's Glory. Christ Jesus was in the form of God, but he did not cling to equality with God. He emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, and was born in our human likeness. Being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. We pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Lord, we beseech you to keep your family, the church, in continual godliness, that through your protection it may be free from all adversities and devoutly given to serve you in good works to the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. God of the nations, we pray for the peace of the world. 
May they, there be an end to war and violence and oppression. We pray especially for the peoples of Ukraine, Russia, the Sudan, North Korea, for the peoples of Afghanistan. We pray for the leaders of the nations and for all in authority that their hearts may be filled with the desire to see all people live in peace and harmony. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of salvation, we pray for the welfare of your Holy Church, in particular for our bishops, Peter, Charlie and Sonia, for clergy and faithful. We pray for our own ministries, that we may be faithful to Christ's calling. We pray for those preparing for ordination to the diaconate. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of creation, we pray for seasonable weather and for an abundance of the fruits of the earth. We pray for people affected by natural disasters around the world, for those affected by climate change, those affected by people's greed and use of the earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray that we may share with justice the resources of the earth, and that we live in trust and goodwill with one another. We pray for the aged and the infirm, for the bereaved and the lonely, for the sick and the suffering, for ourselves and each other. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the poor and the oppressed, for the persecuted, for prisoners and captives, and all who care for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We praise you, Lord God, for the communion of saints and for the glorious hope of the resurrection to eternal life. We pray for those facing death this night. We pray rest eternal, grant unto them, good Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. Be present, merciful God, and protect us through the hours of this night, that we who are wearied by the changes and chances of this fleeting world may rest on your eternal changelessness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Rest well this night. <laughs>